Hello everyone, welcome to the Film Insight Channel. We've seen some crazy moments on the Ink Master, but these are some of the most memorable ones. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content, guys. We're starting with Jason Clay Dunn and his Master Canvas. What are you doing here? Hey. Hey, what? <laughs> no, no, I got nothing for you. I got no love for you. I don't shake people's hand. I don't admire and respect. I think that's quite rude. I can tell you what's quite rude. Trying to screw me out of a $100,000 tattoo. Jason Clay Dunn was a part of season three and ranked in sixth place. That was before he came back in the fifth season to win the title of Ink Master. Dunn, who apprenticed as a tattoo artist at the early age of 19, was praised for his versatility and work in the neo-Asian style. Dunn notably clashed with Joshua Hibbard through both the seasons, who became known for publicly critiquing others' efforts. Dunn gained massive admiration from the viewers for managing his struggles with anxiety. During the final tattoo round, Dunn, along with his fellow competitors Eric Suida and Clean Rock One, were challenged to create a back piece for a blank human canvas. But things didn't go according to the plan. After Dunn was done with the outline of his human canvas, the canvas quit and walked away. Because of this, Dunn was forced to start the tattoo from scratch. The human canvas returned back to get another tattoo done, but she didn't know that the artist was done. This led to a major confrontation between the two. But nothing could keep Dunn from his ultimate victory. Prior to his appearance on the show, Dunn owned his own tattoo studio and art gallery called Tattoo Alchemy in Montclair. However, in 2020, he closed it down to develop a private studio. What we're telling you next might gross you out a bit. Painting with blood. Artists made their own colors until the 18th century using plants, charcoal, soil, fruits, vegetables, and so on. Watercolor became a famous hobby among the rich in society. In 1776, William Reeves began a company that produced cakes in watercolor. He discovered that adding a little amount of honey to the mixture prevented the color cakes from cracking during his research. By the early 1700s, producing paint became a profession. After the Industrial Revolution, the world of color changed in paint tube. Today, with advanced science and technology, the development of paints and pigments is getting better. In Season 5, Episode 10, the contestants were challenged to make their own colors, but the material given to them for the color making was really surprising and maybe even gross. The artists were given pig's blood to make their own ink. The style was gradation, and all the contestants were asked to paint 6x8 murals. They only had six hours to tattoo against the guest judge, Tommy Montoya. The subject matter was the same for everyone, i.e. Jesus Christ on the cross in black and gray. Up next, the Acid Cat. Roland. Well, Roland, I think I speak for every single person in this room when I look at that cat and I say, what the f***? Art's subjective, you know, it's something that everyone's going to look at and see something differently. This is a tattooing skill competition. That cat is just nothing other than an atrocity. Roland Pacheco was a contestant in Season 4 who placed 13th. Hailing from the Big Island of Hawaii, Pacheco is a sixth-generation Polynesian, self-taught tattoo artist, and published author. He is the owner and manager of Exile Custom Tattoo in Hawaii, where he's been honing his technique and researching Polynesian tattoos for the past nine years. In the first episode during the Elimination Tattoo round, the contestants who didn't do well in the Flash Challenge were asked to impress judges by tattooing in their own style. When the time came for judging, Pachico's tattoo didn't make much of an impression. Well, it was supposed to look like a zombie acid cat, but the design and execution were both poor. The tattoo design was deemed among the worst tattoos ever done on Ink Master. Even though the tattoo was more like roadkill, apparently the canvas loved it. Over the next four weeks, Pachico's tattooing didn't get any better. He consistently struggled with color and realism in his designs and always stayed in the bottom three. Ultimately, in episode five, he was eliminated. And next on the list is CJ Jones' major error. I think I'm really gonna impress the judges. The placement's great. I'm using a lot of pretty color. I'm determined to show the judges that I know what I'm doing. CJ Jones was a contestant featured in the second season of the show and ended up ranking in 15th place. 
Joan started tattooing at the age of 24 after getting her first tattoo. She currently works as an artist at Suicide King's Tattoo Parlor in Detroit, Michigan. A tattoo artist not only has to make sure that the design and execution are perfect, but also he or she has to make sure that there is no room for errors. One of the biggest mistakes a tattoo artist can make is to mess up the spelling. Not only will it reflect poorly on the design, but also demonstrate that they are unable to focus. In episode one, Jones made a huge mistake. It was during the elimination challenge round that the contestant was asked to create a tattoo based on the human canvas's idea. At the time of judging, Jones was not very confident about her work and her fear of the judges not liking it came true. Judge Chris Nunez was not a fan of the colored outline. However, aside from that, he noticed a major flaw in the design. It was a spelling mistake. Jones wrote Corinthians instead of Corinthians. And guess what? She only noticed the mistake when the judges pointed it out. Jones tried to defend herself by saying she could fix that and she had experience in fixing tattoos. It didn't sit well with Judge Nunes, who told her to work at a plastic surgeon's office instead. Ouch. Coming up, Naked Canvas. Let's meet your canvases. Ink Master, throughout all the seasons, has brought some amazing themes and challenges for the contestants, and there have been a few challenges that made the competitors feel a little uncomfortable. In Season 4, Episode 4, during the Nude and Tattooed Challenge, contestants were taken aback after seeing their canvas. They were naked. They all were asked to use their own judgment to finalize the design and location of the tattoo, such that it accentuates the flow of the body. Some of the contestants were more than comfortable working on nude bodies, but some of the men felt a little uncomfortable. The winner of this challenge was Scott Marshall. Marshall worked really hard throughout the whole season and ultimately was the winner of season four. Unfortunately, Marshall was found dead on 5th October 2015 at the Holiday Inn Express, possibly because of an overdose. Up next, Clean Rock One that I was the stronger of the tattooer. And for me to lose at the end by a technicality, I mean, that's just, it's unsettling. As we mentioned earlier, Clean featured alongside Dunn and finished as the runner-up of season five of Ink Masters. But guess what? Rock appeared on not one, but in four seasons. If this was not memorable enough, wait till you hear what made it all the more better. After his finish as the runner-up, he returned back to the show in Season 7, where he ended up once again as the runner-up. Clean Rock One showed off his skill with bold, bright new school tattoos, and with every season, he got better. In Season 9, Rock appeared with Aaron to represent their shop, and even though he left quite an impression, he couldn't reach the top three. He finally managed to finish in the fifth position. While he never won an actual season, his determination, passion, and hard work led Ink Master to bring him back for Season 11, Ink Master Grudge Match. In this season, Rock mentored and coached a team against another one led by his arch-rival, Christian Buckingham. Here's what turned out to be a winning streak for Rock. Tony Medlin, the winner of Season 11, was in the team led by Clean Rock One. So what if Rock showed up in four seasons and didn't win any? Medlin's win made him the winning coach, which sounds way better. Yet yeah, finally his hard work did pay off, and this certainly is one win that's going to go down well for both the artists. Clean currently owns his own shop in Vegas and also maintains an online shop that sells merch and tattooing supplies. And now it's time for Kyle Dunbar. Happened. So why the f are you here? You like cameras that much? No, because I'm here to put you in your place. You want to be a dick? I'm sorry. Did you apologize for causing me hundred thousand dollar loss? First of all, I didn't bitch. A Kyle Dunbar featured in season three and season four. Dunbar owns the Almighty Tattoo Studio in Flint, Michigan. He is a self-taught artist who has a reputation of being not a nice guy. Dunbar has worked in every tattoo shop in his hometown of Genesee County, but he was fired from every one of them because of his harsh behavior. In one of the episodes, Dunbar had an explosive exchange with a repeat canvas for his behavior. But his explosive behavior with Judge Chris Nunes was the boiling point in the show. The two always had not seen eye to eye throughout season four. 
The feud started when Judge Nunes harshly criticized Dunbar's elimination tattoo in season four. He reacted to the critique negatively. However, things escalated quickly in the eighth episode during the Flash Challenge instructions. Dunbar began to mad dog Nunes for calling him insane, but the insane comment was actually given by Judge Peck. Dunbar also didn't appreciate the harsh criticism of Nunes about his tattoo. Words were exchanged, and soon words turned into action when Dunbar charged at Nunes. Nunes tried to defuse the situation as he didn't want to fight or make things ugly, but Dunbar's behavior took the best of him. The situation turned messier, and Dunbar once again charged at Nunes after both hurled insults at each other. He was then disqualified from the competition for trying to fight Nunes. Dunbar became one of the most infamous contestants in Ink Master history, and his behavior was certainly one of the most memorable moments of Ink Master. And finally, Ryan Ashley. I've only been tattooing now for five years, and before that, I had a whole nother life. I lived in New York City, I worked for this design company, and I sat at a cubicle. Tattooing has provided me with fulfillment. What makes Ryan Ashley such a hard contestant to forget is the fact that she was the first woman to win Ink Master. Ryan Ashley was the winner of season eight. Ashley learned to draw from her mother, who was also an artist. Ashley, who has worked in the fashion industry, took the artistic talents she developed working with beading and lace and applied them to tattooing to create inspired and elegant patterns. She apprenticed as a tattoo artist in her hometown in Pennsylvania. Ashley gained her experience working at a street shop, and in 2013, she opened a shop with her companion called the Strange and Unusual Oddities Parlor. Throughout the competition, Ashley impressed the judges with her artistic trait and design. She was in the bottom three only once in the competition. With brilliant performances, Ashley bagged the crown of Ink Master Season 8. She was the first woman to win the title of Ink Master in the show's history. Her intricate black and gray tattoos, as well as her jewelry and lace-like skin art, have made her famous. Ashley went on to co-host Ink Master Angels alongside Kelly Doty, Nikki Simpson, and Gia Rose after her big win on Ink Master. She was also a judge on the new Ink Master franchise show, Ink Master Grudge Match, which premiered on Paramount Network in the fall of 2019. She joined DJ Tamba and Clean Rock One as a judge. With that, this video has sadly come to an end. Which of these moments is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, then give us a like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates.